Falco family where homeschool is life and having a teachable spirit is our number one goal. Now you guys, I thought my kids were out for a bike ride. They're definitely back. <laughs> so this is going to be a nice tranquil video. I lost my lollipop. We'll see how this goes. Okay, so I have my little notes over here and I just thought I would quickly walk through 10 things that I plan on doing intentionally in our homeschool to just bring more quality family time and connection into our school days so the first thing is our morning walk if you guys follow me for any amount of time then you probably already know that we do a morning walk it's just a nice thing for us to do a very very short walk especially during the winter time to um, make a smoother transition from getting ready and breakfast in the morning into starting our school day we typically do this after we finish up our morning basket time sometimes daddy gets to come along sometimes we don't go at all okay because <laughs> sometimes it's just way too cold but I really try to get out there when it's raining when it's snowing um, I like them to be able to feel the elements when it is possible Possible. Now, if it's a complete downpour, I'm not going out. <laughs> but if it's a light sprinkle rain, I think it's great to just grab our raincoats and our umbrellas and head out for a quick little, very quick little walk. I highly suggest it. I do understand if you live in really cold climates or, I mean, I understand that it's not possible to go every single day maybe, but I think that if you just make it a thing and try to go as much as you can, it's really great. Um, another thing that we do is this is when we check our weather. Um, so they get to go out and feel the weather. They get to um, feel the snowflake or feel the raindrop or feel the sunshine. Um, that's something I do with them every time we go out for the walk and then when they get back in um, they go and grab their calendars so that they can um, illustrate we just do like a quick little illustration of a sun or raindrops or anything like that for them to take their weather report so that is number one number two is read aloud time now most of you guys probably already do this um, read aloud time in our homeschool is golden um, we added another read aloud time so we try to do at least two times where I'm reading aloud to them um, during the day Typically, they last at the least about 15 minutes. At the most, it could run into two hours. It just kind of depends on the day. But read aloud is kind of a must. It's something I wish I had done earlier on in our homeschool, but here we are, and I'm trying to make up for it. So, <laughs> the third thing is a homeschool meeting. Um, when I do this, days that I do this, I really feel like they just work out better. Um, I just take about five to 10 minutes to communicate to them what we're doing in the day, some of our intentions, ask them their questions, anything that they're interested in learning today, anything that they're interested in adding to their homeschool day. Um, I just think it's really nice to just call it a meeting um, and make it a thing. So number four, Bible journaling. Um, so we Bible journal or even not even just Bible journaling, but just journaling period. I think this is really helpful in homeschool for us. It really lays a foundation for them to be able to get into the word and just kind of um, just kind of explore what the Lord is saying to them or what the Lord is saying to us as a family in our homeschool days. Um, even if it is not Bible journaling related, just journaling in general is really nice. My older son ended up grabbing one of an, an empty notebook to start journaling in, which is really cute because he keeps it by his bed and he just writes about his day. And it's really nice to see in their own words um, what they thought of their day. So. I think it's a habit that I like them to continue on with as they grow older and so why not start it now. So journaling slash Bible journaling in our case in most of our cases is number four. Number five is implementing a reward system. So I know we probably have all tried to do this in many different ways, shapes, and forms. Um, we use a token system and it is golden for us. Um, it helps us so much in our homeschool days and in our just functioning as a well-oiled machine <laughs> or <her> family. <laughs> So um, we use our token system, but really you could use any reward system that you feel like might work out for your family. Um, the key to making a reward system work is to find out 
you know, you really have to pay attention to whether or not it's going to be effective for your family. Um, if your kids don't care about TV time, then adding TV time to your reward system is not going to be effective. Um, if your kids don't care about art time, then adding art time as a um, reward or demerit is not going to be effective. So just finding something that you think might work for you and being consistent. Consistency is so the key, especially with just making sure that they have something and they can hold on to it and that we follow it and we don't get super tired um, of um, sticking to it. That's really, really important. Um, I would suggest if you're not going to stick to it or if you feel like you're just... Uh, the thing is that I think we can always stick to a system of some sorts. Um, it just, whether or not it's super elaborate or simple might be the thing. Um, if you have younger kids or if you just have a lot going on in life, you may just want to keep your reward system super, super simple. Um, our reward system is pretty elaborate as a whole, but there are certain times where we scale back a bit and keep it as simple as possible. But it's the same system. It's just that, you know, depending on the season in our lives, are we going to stick to this elaborate version of the system or are we going to go with the more simple version of the system? So that is number five, just implementing a reward system and sticking to it. Number six, a picnic, lunch, and a movie. This is something that I, we kind of sort of have done the duration of my motherhood. <laughs> but um, it's of course, it's nice to grab a picnic lunch and go out um, on the grass and feel the sun and stuff like that but that's not always possible um, sometimes it just breaks up your homeschool day too much sometimes the weather doesn't permit um, but we always do some sort of picnic lunch and a movie in our living room space or in the homeschool room space or in the boys room or wherever we need to camp out and make it a picnic thing we add some popcorn the rest of our lunch and it's so a thing so sometimes we can do an audio book during that time most of the time it's a movie um, when we do get to go outside it's normally an audiobook or some type of um, some type of um, podcast kid podcast or something of that sort but just having something to listen to or something to watch with your spread all out and it's at lunch time is like golden for us number seven so i picked a specific day for this but of course you could do it on any day tuesday morning selfie is something that i really really want to do just to get into a habit of getting a quick selfie of us in the morning before we get into our homeschool day most of the time i do it in the middle of the homeschool day somewhere but i really wanted to try to stick to doing it at the beginning of the day I think it sets like a fun tone to our day to just get out of the camera and try to pack everybody into the frame and get a quick selfie. You don't need to post them on Instagram. You don't need to post them on Facebook. You don't need to do anything to them just to have them. And I think it's nice to look back on later when you see each day of your homeschool day, even if it went poorly or even if it was wonderful, just to have a picture of all of you just you know, before you start working through the day. So for us, it's gonna be a Tuesday morning selfie. Number eight, I just picked another day, Monday morning dance parties. So I thought this would be a lot of fun to set the scene for the school week if we just start Monday off with a little dance party as well. I just think that these itty bitty little things are really helpful for the kids and let them know that, you know, mommy's here to have fun. It's not all about getting your work done and, you know, picking up your clothes and things like that. Cause I mean, I have to do those things I gotta lay the rules down you know but I also want to make sure I have those consistent um, moments of course I have really sweet precious moments of fun with them throughout the days but I want to have a level of consistency like a moment where they know mommy is just whatever is going on I'm dropping everything to do this specific thing and I need it to be short and sweet and easy for me to be able to do no matter what is going on just taking 10 minutes to put on one of our favorite songs and just dance just get really silly and dance and that is number eight I think my light went all the way down didn't it hold on brighter light <laughs> number nine lunch boxes okay this is something that I definitely need to implement in my homeschool because my kids eat so much and they ask for so much all throughout the day. It's been my um, experience that I've come across many other homeschool moms that say the exact same thing. But um, one thing that has worked well for me in the past when I actually do it is packing their lunch boxes. Um, I used to pack individual lunch boxes. Sometimes that doesn't work out. So I have individual lunch boxes and then I also have like a family lunch box. So depending on the day or what we have going on, either I'll use one or the other. Just having whatever you guys are going to eat during the day 
and putting it into those lunch boxes really helps us not to do more than that so you can eat it all up right now or you can save it and pace yourself throughout the day I don't care when you eat it but when it's gone it's gone and there's nothing else until dinner <laughs> this helps so much because all of the can I have snack can I do this is really distracting throughout the day sometimes so and you can get caught up in the kitchen all day long and that is not something that I want to do pack it up um, the night before everything that you guys are gonna eat throughout the day or that you hope to eat it's really helpful as well for picking you know making good choices for them because the, my kids will definitely eat a whole bowl of cranberries or baby carrots as opposed to chips if they're already prepared and put into their lunch boxes um if we're just going throughout the day and i'm trying to juggle things and get things done and they say oh can i have a snack and they just go grab chips because it's the easiest thing it helps a lot to pack the lunch boxes the night before and then the last thing is number 10 now this may be controversial I have no idea but um, homework time so homework time is just a little bit of time where they have a little worksheet or a little something where they kind of go over what we've been working on so while I have an hour to myself to kind of get some work done or some other things done or housework done or whatever it is just to have him be able to finish his reports from work at the table while they're at the table doing maybe 30 minutes of homework and just sharing with them what they learned throughout the day I feel like this is going to be a really really helpful change so I want to do that intentionally this year and that is it you guys I just wanted to share that with you guys the 10 things that I'm doing intentionally in homeschool for 2019 I hope you guys like this video please make sure you give it a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already hit that notification bell if you want to make sure to get notified every time we post a new video I will see you in the next video Bye.